Uh, good lighting is paramount. Uh, many of these new digital cameras are doing incredible things in low light situations, but the equipment can't do all the work. You still have to know what some of the basic principles are for good lighting. So let's talk about the most basic uh, lighting technique for uh, lighting an interview, which is what we're in interested in in oral history, and that's going to be three-point lighting. So we have three sources of light. We have the key light, uh, we have the backlight, and we have a fill. Now let's take a look at what um, these lights all do and what their function is. Right now we're primarily lit by room lighting, and so, so what we're going to do is bring up the controlled lighting. So let's start off with the key light. Your key light is really the primary light in your three-point lighting system. Uh, so it's at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, it's about six, seven feet away uh, from the subject. It's usually your most powerful light in, in the three of the three sources. The next light is the fill light, which helps balance out the key light. So your shadow uh, is minimized and it helps illuminate the other side of the face that is, is not necessarily um, being uh, controlled by the key light. The backlight is the third light and this is the one that's actually going to provide some dimension. You notice I'm wearing uh, a black jacket, I've got a black background, I have some black hair left uh, and so it is um, uh, the backlight really does light up, you know, the, the edge of my head, the shoulders, and, and um, separates me from the background, uh, which, is, which, which is important, again, providing a balanced approach. It also is great for, once again, minimizing shadows that are created by the other two lights. The key light is usually the more powerful light in mm -hmm. the mix um, and, and is the primary light source, but it creates shadows um, being just one light source, so it needs to be balanced. And so the best way to balance a key light is then to have a fill light that comes in at uh, another angle um, to, to help sort of fill out the lighting of that particular multi-dimensional object. And, and both lights are usually set at around a 45 degree angle. To around the a 45, 45 degree angle, and as you were saying, you like uh, the height to come down from the key light. And the fill light is usually a little bit lower. It's also about half the wattage of, of the key light. And so it really is just balancing out. It's not blasting another light source at, at you. So let's take a look at what it looks like without a fill light again. So. This is just the key light and the backlight. Uh, and you see you've got a significant dark darkening over on this side. Now you can do some, some kind of cool things with, you know, in terms of creative lighting uh, if you're looking for a sort of an arty look. So in some ways the shadowing creates kind of a, a, a creative arty look. Um, uh, but that might get really old in a three hour interview. Uh, and so, so let's take a look at the balancing that's created by the fill light. So the fill light uh, switches on and just uh, does exactly what it says. It fills in, I think, what is, what is um, the gaps created by the key light in terms of uh, overall lighting. And so you see kind of a, a balancing. So right now the backlight is currently on and what you get is a sort of, uh, a, a sort of separation from the background of, you know, around the, the head and the hair and the shoulders. And what that does is you see the light there um, that, that separates me from the background. Even more critical because I'm wearing a black jacket on a black background. Uh, and so you will start to see a sort of blending. So let's try to take out the, the backlight now and see what that looks like. You see the difference now, the backlight is, 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 we don't have the backlight on, and you see me kind of blend into the background. I also, it, I kind of flatten in terms of uh, the picture. So we lose dimension when we don't have the backlight. So let's turn the backlight back on and, and see how it, it kind of pops me out. There, so, so you see uh, it's kind of like a highlight 
uh, in terms of what it's, the effect that it creates. Really important, uh, I think, in the lighting strategy that you take, because a lot of people forget to, or just don't use a backlight, and the video picture just flattens out significantly. Uh, so we're trying to add dimension to a flat uh, uh, picture and uh, through lighting, through creative lighting. You know what a good example would be to now have you take your jacket off? Ah, yeah. Okay, so um, we've made a little change here, which is we asked Doug to take off his jacket. So now we have a completely different composition. And in fact, in my opinion, um, this is a much more interesting shot. So Doug's greenish blue shirt against the black backdrop is going to be much more enjoyable for a longer interview to watch. It's difficult to make me look interesting, so I appreciate that. Now lighting wise, um, we've left the same setup. We still have a backlight, so we see uh, the, the dimension of his, his right shoulder and the key light we left in the same place um, and we have a relatively even light across his face where the fill has just left a slight shadow on his left, the left side of his face. One of the keys to lighting is always going to be flexibility and understanding what is the consequence of, of a, light, uh, a light source put in the wrong place and knowing uh, and feel comf feeling comfortable making the right adjustment to balance out that light and to achieve the effect that you want. There's only one way to do that and that's through practice. You know, set up your light system um, and put somebody in the seat and move those lights around and get a sense for how does your camera uh, react to changes in lighting, how does your moving your lights change uh, the way that your picture ultimately uh, turns out.